Hello and welcome back to the Stitch Your Own Adventure podcast. My name is Erica um, and today I'm going to talk about my knitting and some crafty things that I have been up to. If you've been enjoying these videos, please feel free to like this one and subscribe to the channel for more. Um, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get into things. So today is my first day back in town after a little vacation, so I am back in Minnesota today. It's a little gloomy out, but still quite warm. Too warm for knitwear for me. Um, but yeah, I'll talk about a little bit more about my vacation at the end, in case you want to stick around for that. So I do have a couple of finished objects today. So let's start with my finished socks. I'm so excited. I've shown these the past past few episodes. Um, these are socks that I'm making for my boyfriend. Um, they're just made out of Patton's Croy um, in the color gray brown marl. They're just some some striped socks. Um, I made them 64 stitches. I made the leg 70 rows. The foot is like 90 rows between well before the toe. It's 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 a long foot. But yeah, I tried to manage the yarn so that I could get um, matching socks out of the two skeins I had, and I think I did pretty well. It's just down at the toe, it gets a little, like this toe goes into the gray. And this one just ends with that little bit of red, but I'd say overall, I'm not worried about that. So I'm excited that they match. I'm excited for him to get to start wearing them. And I'm excited that it's cooling down enough that hopefully he can actually wear them soon. So yeah, so hopefully I'll be starting another pair pretty soon. I haven't decided what I wanna do for my next socks. Um, I've got a few other colors of this type of yarn, the Patton's Croy, that I might use, or I've got some bleachy and those are always fun and they go so fast and the yarn is really soft so we'll see more to come <laughs> um and then my other finished object well okay it's mostly finished but i'm not going to try it on for you today because it's not blocked um but i'm planning to wear it next hopefully next weekend when i film it'll be cool um, and I can wear this for you guys, but this is my spring sorrel crop. It is done. Okay, doesn't it look so funny? <laughs> With the ribbon here. Let me let me move some of the strings out of the way at least. I haven't even woven in the ends, haven't blocked it, but I did I did finish all the knitting and I'm really excited. I think I'm gonna try to block it this afternoon. Cause why not? What else am I gonna do? Um, okay, tucking all these strings in. Okay, so here it is, yay. It's got this um, beautiful dip stitch pattern for the yoke. And then it's got these, um, I don't know, what do you call this? It's definitely not three quarter. Quarter, is this quarter sleeve? I don't know, but they go to like mid bicep and I really like it. It fits really well. When I was trying it on, it, it fits better now that it has the sleeves, which is awesome. But yeah, so it's got this beautiful long rib for the sleeves and for the bottom of the body. Um, and it looks so silly because it's so cinched in, but when you wear it, it ends up being really flattering. It kind of stretches out. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm I'm so pleased with it. I'm really excited to wear it. It is a crop top, um, and I'm fine with that. When I tried it on with jeans before blocking, so as it is now, it's just like a little shorter, I think, than I want it to be, um, just a smidge. So I'm hoping, I'm gonna try to block a little extra length into it and see if that gets it to that, that point. I've got a really short torso, <laughs> generally so there's not usually like a ton of room um but this is just like a little bit too short like I like my crop tops where they hit just the top of high-waisted jeans there's not like a huge 
gap. Um, so that's, that's how I like to wear mine. So I'm hoping that a little blocking will get this to that point. But yeah, isn't it so pretty? And I got this like gray, what is that pattern called? I don't know, but I have this like gray, dark gray skirt that I think I could wear this with that would look really nice. I'm excited to try that and see if it works, if it looks good together. But otherwise, like, yeah, this will go with any, any color of jeans. So I'm really excited to wear it, even though it's too short to wear to work. So darn, but I picked a crop top, so <laughs> that's on me. Um, I knew that was going to be the case. All right, so those are my two finished knit objects. And then I can't really claim these next items as, um mine <laughs> i didn't make them my mom made them um while i was on my visit home but i did want to share them because they are just super cute and a really fun easy project so maybe you guys could get some inspiration from it i left them just out of reach so i will be back one moment okay back so my mom made for me the cutest felt ornaments and I started to make one but honestly I just I can't I can't get that into knitting or pardon me I get very into knitting I can't get that into sewing but and it was so hot where it, we were it was just like you know when your hands get a little sweaty and you just don't want to be sewing and all this stuff but she made me this adorable collection of felt ornaments and I will show them to you so she made this cute little gingerbread man and so all she did is just, you know, hold, hold two pieces of feather, felt, <laughs> felt back to back, cut out the shape she wanted. And then on one side, she did the decoration. So there, there isn't anything on the other side. So she would just sew on, she sewed on like extra felt pieces on the bottom. There's like some gold ribbon she sewed on and she sewed the little sequins, um, did a little a bit of embroidery by the arms. And then just stuffed it and sewed the the back piece on. Isn't it cute? So that's the gingerbread man. She made a little candy cane. Oh, not in not in frame. <laughs> um, little candy cane. And sewing sequins on is not as hard as I thought because I did work on one of them. I didn't quite finish it. But I did, I did work on one of them. Um, and sewing sequins on is, is actually pretty fun and easy if you haven't done it. If you do any sewing, then you'll be like, yeah, that, yeah, like I know how to do that. But if you're like me and you really don't know any sewing, um, it is really easy. Basically, you just, you like come up from the back to the front, you put a little sequin on your needle, you put a bead on your needle, you slide those down to where you want them to be. And then you just go back in, but you don't go through the bead, you only go through the sequin. And that just holds it holds it right there. How cool is that? Um, I thought it was gonna be way harder. And when my mom showed me, I was like, oh, yeah, that's pretty simple. Okay, so then next, she made these two, and these ones are probably like the easiest to make because they're just squares or rectangles. She made these two presents. Aren't they so cute? So she just did like an extra piece of felt for the ribbon, put some sequins on. She did a little embroidery to make the polka dots and the stars. And she sewed on a little bow. So cute. And I love how all together they make this like nice little collection. <laughs> she made a tree covered in light. And then this last one is my personal favorite. Um, this is a llama or an alpaca, whatever you choose. Look at it. Okay, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna hold this by the string. It's a cute little face and it's a little blanket. You don't really ride llamas or it's not a saddle. What would you call that? <laughs> but yeah. And even this has sequins on it. So yeah, super cute. I think they're so festive. 
and like I can picture having them on the tree and the sequins are just gonna catch the lights really well and yes so I'll see if I can sort of hold, hold them up and you can see the collection as a whole but yeah I'm so excited about these and I think yeah they'd make a really fun project to do maybe not with like little little kids but if you had like older kids um, who can do some like basic sewing you could totally totally manage this Oh man, the gingerbread man's backwards. Ink. Yay! <laughs> so yeah, so those are finished objects. Not my finished objects, but worthy of showing nonetheless. Um, yeah. So then, after all of these things, I only have one work in project left. Honestly, I didn't get quite as much of it done over the last few weeks as I sort of thought I would, but that's all right. Oh, and this is my leftover yarn from the sweater. I had ordered five 50 gram skeins of this DK weight yarn, and I've only got this much left. And I think it's like in two skeins, but I think it's less than a 50 gram. So I think I didn't like over order, which is always nice. All right, this is my touchstone, and this is by Fogbound Knits. And I should say the sweater was designed by Woolen Pine Design. Um, but yeah, so this is by Fogbound Knits, and it's just a simple shawl, um, an asymmetrical shawl, and I've got the yarn in the way. It's growing. It's definitely growing. So I know last time I sort of mentioned I wasn't happy that I went straight from the gray to the black, but I am happy to see that the black is sort of fading into a gray on this side. So at least I'll get that effect on one side. And I think once it's wrapped around your neck, it'll look nice. It's kind of like two-tone and um, like an ombre effect. <laughs> I get both, the best of both worlds, right? So yeah, so it's getting bigger. It's quite long already, but I definitely, it's not, not full size yet. I think I'm just gonna see how big I can get it with this skein of yarn that I have. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe I'll just follow the pattern and stuff when it stops. But yeah, so as far as how much I actually did, let's see. Put a little marker in for the last time I did a podcast. Or no, maybe I didn't. Oh, yes I did, okay. So I put this marker in. It wasn't actually the last time I did a podcast, but I do think it might have been the last time I worked on it. Um, it's that little green marker, and that is where I started at the airport when I was leaving. So I did a decent chunk all the way from, you know, down there to here. It's a solid, what, five inches? Six inches? maybe, if I'm feeling generous. So yeah, it is still a really fun, easy pattern. Um, yeah, I just didn't knit as much as I thought I was going to, and then when I did, I was like, oh, I wanna work on the sweater, I really wanna finish that, and I wanted to finish the socks. So this was kind of on the back burner. But now that it's the only work in progress left, I'm hoping I can really put some good time into it and make some, some decent progress on it. It's like I'm wearing this fall, and it starts getting chilly, but it's not like, so before it gets so chilly that you need to really, really bundle. So yeah, those are all my projects this week. Um, so I am starting to look at what I wanna do next. I do wanna start another sweater, I think, when I'm done with this, um, once I've cleaned up. <laughs> then I'm going to um, look online for what yarn I wanna use and what projects I want to start. So hopefully the next episode will have a little bit more new content. I know you've guys have seen all of these things before, except the sweet ornaments. Um, so yeah, I think I'm leaning towards making a couple neutral colored things. Um, most of my sweaters that I've made have been kind of bright. So yeah, I think some good neutrals will be good in my closet. <laughs> so we'll see what I find and then yeah, so 
I'll go into a little bit about what my last week has been like. So I went home um, to Northern California. I'm from San Francisco Bay Area, the East Bay, not actually San Francisco. Um, and yeah, I just went home, stayed with my mom. I got to catch up with some friends and did a little bit of knitting. It was warm there. It wasn't like crazy hot weather or anything, but my mom's apartment doesn't have air conditioning and just throughout the day it just heats up. And so from like one o'clock to seven o'clock, it's roasting <laughs> in her apartment. So I couldn't, I don't know, you want to get so hot and you don't always want to knit, but it was really fun. We just kind of relaxed and got to eat good food, just spend some time, you know, not working, which is always nice. And I did a lot of walking, which was fun. That's something that I always do when I go home. Um, I didn't learn how to drive until I was in Minnesota, until I was an adult. And my mom doesn't drive, so lots of walking to get places. And it felt really good to have like a mile or two walk almost every day. Um, it felt really nice, so hopefully I can sort of incorporate more of that into my regular routine, because it does, you just feel good. And you get a little bit of, you know, sunshine, get to spend some time outdoors. So yeah, it was it was really enjoyable, but not as much knitting as I expected. I thought like during every movie I was gonna be knitting, but then it was just so hot. <laughs> um, yeah, and then we did watch some shows. I didn't watch any knitting podcasts while I was there because, I don't know, it's like if you go to visit someone, it seems I didn't want to like hole myself up in my room and watch stuff that she wasn't interested in when we could be watching something together and relaxing and hanging out. So we did watch some shows together that would be really good shows to watch while knitting because they're both like happy, sort of upbeat but calm TV. So um, we watched Abbott Elementary the first season and I think there's another season coming out soon. That's like a, it's a sitcom, you know, mockumentary style kind of like I guess the same style as like The Office and Parks and Rec, but it's just a really, really adorable show um, about some teachers at an underfunded school and them trying to get by. Um, and yeah, it was really good. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed it. It'd be good, good show for knitting. And then we also watched The Doghouse UK, which is a reality show that follows like a dog rescue place. And each episode, like different families or individuals come in looking for a dog and they like talk to the people who work there about what they're looking for and the people who work there like match them up with a dog and you get to see them meet the dog and at the end of the episode you get to find out like if it worked out, like if they adopted the dog or had to, you know, chose to go a different direction. And it's just so heartwarming to like hear the people's stories and then see how the dogs like affect their lives. And I don't know, it's very very nice. I would highly recommend it if you just want something that's like pleasant and nice and British. It kind of gives me the same feeling as like the Great British Baking Show. So yeah, I think if you're into knitting podcasts, you'd probably enjoy that sort of vibe. <laughs> so yeah, that's what I've been up to. Back to work tomorrow and just continuing on. So, um, thank you so much for watching. If you watched all the way to, all the, way to the end, um, I'm, it just, it makes me really happy to, to think that, yeah, some people are enjoying what I'm making and what I'm putting out there. So, thank you so much. Subscribe if you would like to see more of my videos. And I will talk to you soon. Bye.